our loving Father, God Almighty, attests Pastor Dill's ministry with immediate signs, wonders, miracles, and healings as great multitudes throng to Jesus, praising Him, thanking Him, and loving Him, our Lord and Savior. Jesus loves you, every one of you, my loving children. If I could hear this all the time, like a heartbeat, what a joy it is. That's why Holy Spirit is given to us. Holy Spirit lives in us. Why? Because He reminds us all the time. He is quicker than our heartbeat. He is God Himself. And He says, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. My dear people of God, for some of the people, or I would say majority, this word, this powerful truth has become taken for granted. Oh, what's there in that love? What has God done for me? You take it so lightly, all of us. Beloved, the Holy Bible says God himself is love. He is full of love. He himself is love. My beloved, if you crush him from all sides, what will come? Love. If you take a sponge and wet it with water and crush it in your hands, beloved children, water will come out. In the same way, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was crushed from all sides in his life on this earth. Right from birth, right from birth, God who came in flesh to save sinners like us, forgive us. He was crushed even from the womb of his blessed mother, her virgin womb, because Jesus came from heaven. He is God in flesh. And right up to the cross where he died for our sins, 
to save us, forgive us, and to redeem us, and rose from the dead, ascended to the Father, sat at the right hand of the Father, even today, interceding for us. What a Savior we have. He is crushed, my loving child, and all that comes out of him is love. That is his blood that was shed for us, all of us, no matter who you are. And therefore, today, in all humility, from our church at home, essentially the King's Revival Church International, Dubai, and under the parent ministry, Dill Ministries International, me and my dear wife, Shuhanti, and our dear one and only daughter, Divina, in all humility, ask the great Holy Spirit to bring the word for you and for me. Jesus loves you. I am nothing to give you. I am nothing. But the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, God in spirit, He has everything to give you and me today. So we will ask the Holy Spirit, no matter who you are, Jesus loves you. He's going to give you His peace and joy and His salvation. Oh, beloved, and everything you need. Miracles, signs, healings, wonders, whatever. Just look unto Jesus. Nothing in my hands I bring Simply to the cross I cling Naked come to thee for dress Helpless come to thee for grace. Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. He loves you. No matter who you are, no matter from what faith you are, no matter from where you have come, my loving child, Jesus is waiting for you. He is waiting for you. My dear people of God, every Thursday, 9 o'clock Dubai time, every th in the evening, in the evening, in the night, and every Saturday, 7 o'clock Dubai time, my beloved, when you say Dubai, the whole world gets to know. Blessed nation. Oh, Saturday, 7 o'clock in the night, and Thursday, 9 o'clock in the night. Oh, Jesus is waiting for you. He is waiting for any of you, all of you. He wants to pour his love, his mercy, his grace. Dear people of God, he loves you. He is there to protect you. He is there to safeguard your life, your future. Come to him. Come to him. He is God. He loves you. Rejoice today. Rejoice because you have a message written in your heart. Jesus loves you no matter what. And the blood of Jesus shed for you and for me, sinners, is the very proof, is the very love of God manifested in human form. John 14, 21. You don't have to fear. No condemnation, no judgment, no punishment, no death, no curse. You are free, I am free, forgiven, pardoned. Well, at the cross, at the blood, at the blood, at the blood of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will immerse you into the blood and you will come out as the child of God every moment of your life, all of us until rapture and eternal. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, in Mark's Gospel chapter 2. That's what the great Holy Spirit gave me and all of us. Mark's Gospel chapter 2. Here he entered into Capernaum again because Capernaum is a place where some say that's the headquarters of the ministry of Jesus, his great love and power because it, it was surrounded by Gentile areas and people believed in him, people believed in him, people believed in him. In Nazareth, they hardly believed in him. They said, oh, we know him. Well, he's the carpenter's son. 
Oh, beloved, familiarity. Familiarity always reduces faith. Oh, beloved ones. That's why, that's why sometimes or many times we have to keep away from people. Because then the Lord can take us higher and higher and use us to truly, truly represent him. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He comes to you and to me. He is waiting to bless us today. He is waiting to bless us. See the Lord. Wherever my name is recorded, I will come and bless you. Jesus says, I will come and bless you wherever my name is recorded. That means whoever lifts the name of Jesus and comes trusting just that person, Jesus. Don't put your trust in a man or any servant of God, no matter who we are. We are virtually nothing. Paul the apostle said, the greatest apostle next to Jesus said, with all the mighty power of Holy Spirit working through him, he said, I am still nothing. Who are we then? You and I must come trusting Jesus. He loves you, loves you, loves you. Here you see, when he came to Capernaum, they just came from all directions. And if you read the study uh, and, and study this in the Holy Spirit, beloved ones, you will know, we will know, there were a lot of learned people there, teachers of the law. Pharisees, Sadducees, the scribes, they know the laws of Moses in and out. And learned, educated, literate people. They wanted to hear what Jesus said. They were amazed at the miracles and healings and the love and the love and the love that saved people. Every miracle saved their lives. Every healing saved their lives. He never did things to show off or perform. It meant nothing to Jesus and must the same for all of us. Every miracle in the Bible is to save someone, to save them from some sin or some terrible situation in their life, save them from agony, sorrow, death, or fear. If you read every miracle, every healing, save them from hunger or famine. He is a saving God. He saves us from sin and death and gives us life. No more death for us, no more curse for us. In Christ Jesus, come. So people just thronged and they just came from all directions. And the Bible says, my loving children, what they were there to hear the word of God. Hear the word of God. Hear the word of God. And he preached the word to them. My loving children, he preached the word to them. You know, it's very interesting. It's very interesting, great servants of God, great people of God, all of you, beloved ones of God. There was a time, it's in the Bible, when there was a very devout man called Cornelius. He was a very devout man in the modern day terminology. He was a very pious, devout Catholic man. Very pious, devout Catholic man, clean man. He prayed to God gave help to the poor. Very, and he was a Roman a captain. Oh, beloved, and the position he was holding in the society when Romans were governing the whole world practically at that time. Now, he, one day when he was fasting and praying to the living God, an angel came and said, your prayers are heard, Cornelius, your prayers are heard. And I have come to tell you, you are a beloved of the Lord. But, 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 there is a but for anyone. Send word for Simon Peter. There is someone who is living in a house near Galilee. He is one of the apostles of Jesus. Send your men, get him down here. Invite him, invite him. He will, he has a word to preach to you. You are yet not heard the word. Our prayers are heard. Many of us are very happy and satisfied. But 
are we hearing the word of God? Because Cornelius lacked something with all his piousness and devout behavior and decency and honesty and a clean life and giving to the poor and being so benevolent in life. He still had to hear the word. There is something in this word because the Holy Bible says the word is Jesus. John 1, 1, John 1, 14, and the word became flesh. He is the word of God existing forever in the past, in the present, and in the future. He is Jesus, your Savior and my Savior, your God and my God, my loving children. So Cornelius invited Peter, and Peter was somewhere else. He had a vision that there is going to be an invitation for you. And you have to go to a Gentile's house. Now, don't say no. I love the Gentiles. I am saving the Gentiles. Go and preach the word. So Peter went. There were three messengers that came to take Peter to um, uh, Cornelius' house. So he went there without any fear because Jesus had told him, Oh, beloved ones. And there, there was a big crowd in the house. Cornelius was such a humble man, though he had a great position in the Roman army. He fell down at the feet of uh, Peter and respected him. And Peter lifted him up and said, I'm an ordinary man. Don't come to my feet. I'm an ordinary man. And then he preached the word. Now, you can say Cornelius was a praying man. Many of us are praying people. But are we hearing the true word? Are we hearing the right word? Are we hearing the real word, Jesus of Nazareth? Or are we hearing the words of people? My loving child, all of us, we, this Bible is the living word. No matter who you are, no matter how good you can be, unless we have the word of God in us and live and do the word of God, we cannot enter into heaven. Jesus may bless us on this earth. He will bless us. Cornelius was blessed. What did he lack? He lacked nothing. His prayers were heard. He lacked nothing, but God loved him so much. God loved him so much. He didn't want Cornelius to miss heaven. Having blessed, being blessed here, having God loving someone and then not able to take him into heaven is God is grieved. He didn't want that situation. He is so loving more than us. He is loving more than us. He is compassionate more than us. He is merciful. He loves you, loves you. Take his word, word into your heart today and say, Lord, I will obey your word. All these men were there, or whoever were inside that house, packed, fully packed. Jesus preached the word. When Peter preached the word, Holy Spirit came upon everyone and Cornelius was filled in the Holy Spirit. Everyone in that house, all Gentiles, all heathen, filled in the Holy Spirit. They received the word gladly that Jesus Christ is the Savior. Jesus Christ is the living God. And they were all filled in the Holy Spirit. They were water immersion baptized. Acts of the Apostles, 10th chapter. Acts of the Apostles, 10th chapter. So in the same way, beloved, you may be in any miserable state. You may be in such a state that you are desperate and you may be wondering, my loving child, that is the word coming to you today. To all of us, Jesus loves you. He is living. And because Jesus lives, you shall live also. Receive Jesus. Receive Jesus. Invite Jesus into your life, into your heart, into your soul. Oh, let him fill you. Every sin is washed by his blood. No condemnation, no death, no punishment, no judgment. Come, as you hear this word. Oh, as you hear this word, tell Jesus, Lord, this word is for me. Come, Lord, come into my life. No matter who you are, he loves you. You may be the most powerful servant of God. Blessed are you, but you need Jesus. So do I, everyone, more and more and more and more, over and over again. We need Jesus to fill us. Hallelujah. He loves you. He loves you. He, Jesus preached the word. All of a sudden, I'm just narrating this. Jesus would have got disturbed. Some noise. Some noise. He looked up because it was on the roof to see, my God, the roof has been split open, broken. And he saw the faces of four people 
And what did they do? They were bringing down a man right down in front of Jesus, paralyzed, paralyzed, bedridden, important. He couldn't walk. He was bedridden, paralyzed. Such healings and miracles have been so common in our ministry. You can see on my magazines. Oh, beloved, television programs. And now we have reduced our TV programs. But we are still on in some of the few stations. YouTube, Facebook, go. My loving children. All done from this great land, Dubai. Worldwide now bearing fruits. My loving children, though this is a truly an indigenous ministry started in Dubai, founded in Dubai by Jesus himself, spread out everywhere. My loving children, there was a boy who was with us, in, a lovely boy, I call him my son, there are so many of them, thousands and thousands of my spiritual sons worldwide spread. They're all doing wonderfully well. And in the Lord, this boy was a heathen, Many years ago, maybe 28 years ago, yes, probably at the early stages, stages of our church. And he had a, a defect in his knees, in his knees. He couldn't stand long, he couldn't work long, he couldn't walk for a long time. There was a defect in his knees, so they took him to a hospital here in this blessed land, Dubai. And the dear doctors did whatever they could. But it didn't improve much. He couldn't stand and work for a long time. He couldn't walk for a long time. He had to sit. So, uh, and in this part of the world, if you do that, uh, uh, the employers won't like you. You have to do a job of work or you will be sent home. My loving children. And so he was suffering inside. And his dear friend loved Jesus. Loved Jesus, his own roommate. And he used to come to our church. So he brought him to our church, this boy, and this boy, beloved ones, was a heathen, for the heathen, Gentile. So very reluctantly, because he couldn't bear this suffering, he couldn't walk much, he couldn't stand and work much, and his work, his office, his job was at risk, pain and whatever. So he just brought him to the church, and they were seated in the rare. Now, this kind of miracles is not just one-off. It is so common because of the great Holy Spirit. Because of the great Holy Spirit. Nothing of ours, please. Nothing of ours. It's all Jesus and his love and his compassion. And the great Holy Spirit came upon me. And I said in the rare, there is a person. You, have, you, are, you are getting fed up with your life because of your legs, your knees your legs, in your feet, your knees. Jesus heals you now. Jesus loves you and he heals you. You will stand and walk and live for Jesus. Go, my son. I didn't touch him. I didn't know who he was. Only Holy Spirit knows. Jesus knows. God knows your pain. God knows your agony. God knows your tears. He's your father. He's your father. He's your father. That's why we say, come to him. Come to him. He loves you, loves you, loves you. No conditions. No rituals, no, no customs and traditions. And you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do that. No, just come as you are and say, Lord, I need you, Lord. I need your help, I need your love, I need your mercy, I need your favor. Oh, rejoice, beloved. He is ready to pour his favor on you, any one of you. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. He won't ask questions. Where have you been all these while? Why didn't you come before? What did you do? No, he's your father. The moment he sees you, he's ready to bless you. He loves you, loves you, loves you. So they, they went home. My friend and this boy went home. That night, all of a sudden, early morning, this boy, when he was turning and sleeping, he felt his legs could move freely. The pain he had, or the uneasiness the, he had in his leg, in his knee, was not there. He got up, and he was a very tall uh, uh, boy, smart-looking boy. He jumped, he did exercise in the morning, and his other roommate was shocked. Early morning, he's doing all this. He asked, what happened to you? Are you all right? He said, I am perfectly all right. I can bend my knees, I can squat, I can kneel, I can walk. 
So that afternoon itself, they went to the doctor. The doctor was surprised. He took the form earlier X-ray and the present X-ray. Oh, Bill, our everything is made new in his knee joint. There was a ligament that was missing. It was created already there. Jesus is a creator. He creates new organs whenever you need it. It's all in his hands. This boy was overjoyed. The doctor was surprised. So puzzled. How did this happen? What that was not there in his knee joint was there now. Probably some tissue or muscle or ligament. I don't know. It happened 28 years ago. My loving children, my great children. He loves you, loves you, loves you. Maybe 25 years ago, if I'm right. Anyway, from that day, this dear boy followed Jesus. He was water immersion baptized. I changed his name. I gave him a new name. He is one of my spiritual sons. And today, here's a powerful church in South America. My loving children. My loving children. He uses this name. I said, do whatever you want. Oh, beloved ones, he has, a, he has a wonderful ministry for young boys in the Mexico area and all that. He's my spiritual son. He loves you. Jesus loves you. No matter like that, there are thousands and thousands. But it all began here. By loving child, my dear ones, he loves you, loves you, no matter who you are. He's going to bless you today. He's going to bless you today. He loves you. There's another uh, testimony my media will show now. When we were in Mauritius, there was a dear man who was healed from his crutches. He couldn't walk, and, but the reason was not paralysis. The reason was he had a terrible, defeated, I say now defeated, cancer in his legs, between his thighs, legs. And the Holy Spirit instantly healed him in the miracle healing rally. And because of that, he had to walk with his crutches. But then he removed his crutches because the lump has gone. The tumor, the lump or swelling had gone immediately. He was able to move his legs and walked up and down on the stage, praising Jesus, giving him the glory and the honor. You will see it now, my loving children, my beloved ones. Jesus loves you. There are countless testimonies, countless evidence documented. Oh, beloved ones, every miracle saved their life. See, the first miracle saved their life. It's nothing to do with money and silver and gold and no. Saving lives, saving souls. Oh, with that miracle, that dear man in Mauritius just began to praise Jesus, give him the glory that his whole life is going to do that. See, the life is saved. And that dear boy, my spiritual son, who is in South America now, my loving children, he's pastoring a church, hallelujah, bringing young boys, young girls to Christ who are lost in this world because he had a personal, personal miracle that changed his heart, saved his soul, every miracle to save us, to save our souls, our spirit, our body, he loves you, loves you. My dear children in Christ Jesus, uh, one little announcement to all of you blessed ones. Our main service, our main English services are Sunday morning, Sunday evening. That's all and no other day and nothing else. The others are all the various languages. But our main services, my loving children, are Sunday morning, Sunday evening in Basha, in Basha. The Lord loves you children, every one of you, and He will stand by you, and Jesus will do everything, your faithfulness and your faithful allegiance in every matter must be always Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and nowhere else, and in 
no other day. This is the main services. I humble myself to tell you this and announce this. Jesus loves you, loves you, loves you. Bring new people, new people, Sunday morning, Sunday evening. That's our main services and that's it. Jesus loves you, loves you, loves you. With a, with a loving heart, I humbly announce this in my program. Jesus loves you, loves you, loves you. Bless you. Now, Jesus looked at the faith of these four fellows. It's a very interesting. You know, the, and the Bible says he saw their faith and told this man, he saw their faith and told this man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, this, this man is a stranger to Jesus. He's just being brought right in front of Jesus when he's, he's delivering the mighty word, word of the Father, the love of God. And all of a sudden, it's an interruption. He just looked up, the roof is open, split open, broken. The owner of the house would have been furious. His house, his roof is broken, beloved. In a house, what is a roof? Tell me, you tell me. Jesus loves you when you have a roof over your head. What does that mean? We all say, there's a beautiful song, he gave me a roof over my head. My faithful Lord Jesus, my Father. What does that mean? Which means, I have a shelter. I have a shelter where I can go and lay my head down every night. Roof over our head. You may be sitting in very comfortable places, a wonderful roof over your head. Do we ever realize it's Jesus, it's our God, our Father who gives us a roof over our head all the time. Now, what is a roof? Beloved, it's not only a shelter, beloved, it's safe, it's safe, it's safe. Many times, many people, if only I could get home, I'm safe. If only, suppose you are going out somewhere and you get caught in a heavy rain or storm or whatever, and there'll be so many houses around the place that you can't just go into any house wet and say, I want to sleep here tonight, no. They may not even take you in, you are a stranger. But even if it takes long, you will say, I will go to my home where my dad or mom lives. I'm safe there. They will accept me. The roof is a place of shelter. The roof is a place of safety where you are accepted. You, can't, you won't be accepted in every home. It's only your own father, mother's home, your home. Your home, you will be accepted. All of us, all of us, and safe we are. So when that is blown apart, your safety today may be thrown apart. You may not have a proper shelter in your life. You may be feeling insecure in life. You may be having a nice house, nice home, but the Holy Spirit is taking us into the spirit, into your emotions, into your soul, into your personality inside. You may be feeling insecure in life, no money, no assurance of your job, no health. And the dear doctors could have diagnosed and forecasted many things. Fear, fear of the future, unable to face people, insecure, feeling lonely, depressed, rejected. You may be anyone. You may feel that I don't have a say in my workplace. Many of you get rejected when no one cares for your words in your workplace. Maybe in your family, how many people get rejected in their families because their words don't have a respect at home? Maybe the mother or the father or maybe children. As parents, you don't really care for your words of your children. I learned a lot of things from my dear daughter, one and only daughter, Divina. They speak wisdom and grace of Jesus. Sometimes children face a lot of rejection because fathers, mothers just treat them just like that. Oh, they don't know anything. They sometimes or many times know many things more good than us. Oh, this is the time from the, of the former reign and the latter reign mixing together. The fathers and the children or the parents and the children together as one. My loving children. Oh, don't disregard anyone. You may feel that you are thrown out of life if you have 
charisma and personality and show and silver and gold, you, you can be recognized anywhere, but that is just for a few moments. The true smell of yours will come out and then they will not even remember you. That's the world. We must have Christ Jesus likeness in us. My loving children, you may feel so depressed and lonely. I don't feel safe, Lord, on this earth. You may say there are certain people. They have, they have this great defeated, defeated mental, mental agony. I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe in this world. The defeated devil brings that defeated thoughts that can lead to many things. You don't feel safe. You don't feel sheltered. You don't feel loved. There's no one to, just to say even I love you. How many people long for that word? We are living in electronic, electronic, artificial world today. Artificial world. A show world where genuine love, true love, holy love is scarce. It is there still, but very scarce only in Christ Jesus and those who are led by the Lord Jesus Christ in his Holy Spirit. Well, they will say, we love you. We care for you. These are words of heaven. These are words of life. That's why they came to hear the word of Jesus. His words are life. When some people left Jesus, he turned to Simon Peter and asked him, do you also want to leave me? Some disciples left Jesus. They saw the miracles, they saw the healings, but they couldn't hear, bear the word. The word said, love everyone. The word said, forgive your enemies. The word said, be holy. The word said, be humble. Oh, they couldn't. But they loved miracles and this and that. They loved excitement and entertainment. But when the word came, be humble. When the word came, be truthful. When the word came, be holy. When the word came, be loving and kind. Oh, that uh, they didn't want to hear. They went off. Jesus' own disciples. And Jesus turned to Simon Peter and asked, Do you want to leave? Do you want to leave? He said, No, Lord, no. Where can we find the words of life? Where can we find the words of life except in you, Christ Jesus, my Lord? Will you say that today? Will you say that today? Beloved, lift your hands and say, in you is life for me, Lord. He loves you, loves you, loves you. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. He has nothing against you. He is for you. He is on your side. The resurrected Jesus and his shed blood. Hebrews 12, 24, Psalm 56, verse 9, God is on our side. He loves you. No shelter, no safety, no acceptance. No acceptance in office, in families, in friend circles also. Friends circles. If you have something to throw off and show off, if you have something to throw off and show off, everywhere there is acceptance. But remember, that is just temporary. It is one day going to stink. That's the time everyone will turn their back and you will be left alone. Before that day comes, servants of God, men and women of God, all of us, come to Jesus. Say, Lord, it's you that I need. Fill me, fill me. He accepts us. No refusal with Jesus. No refusal. No refusal with Jesus. He accepts us. He accepts us. There's a story, one millionaire, billionaire, I don't want to tell a name, who owns a seal, lots of companies and whatever in a different country. One day during a holiday, it was a holiday, so no staff was there. He was in his private room working in his computer. Suddenly he heard a noise, someone whistling and singing, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. This I know, the Bible tells me so. Sing them all over again to me. So he was wondering where this noise is, this song is, it was irritating to him. 
He was all alone in his big palatial office in his personal room working on his computer. But now there's a nice a song coming from somewhere, somebody. So he immediately called his uh, driver or his uh, valet or his bodyguard or whoever and asked, who is this? And they said, the cleaning boy, the cleaning boy. Today is a holiday, so they have come and they are cleaning your office and all the, the cleaning boy. Then he said, he's just singing and singing. It's disturbing me. So they, they came and told that cleaning boy, don't shout and sing, just do your work. It's disturbing the big boss, the owner, the owner of the office or the company. So for some times it was quiet and again he heard the noise, yes, Jesus loves me. Sing them all over again to me, hallelujah, Jesus loves me. So he got annoyed and he called his uh, 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 guards down and said, bring this boy to my room. So they brought him to the room. So this, he was shocked to see a young little boy shivering and standing and he said, sir, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He said, you are disturbing me. You are disturbing me. He said, sir, I'm a little boy, please. He said, if I tell your, your company, they will sack you. They will terminate you. Sir, please don't do that, sir. Please, I'm a simple boy. This is my bread, this cleaning. I'm from a poor family. Then he said, why are you singing like this? He said, sir, Jesus makes me happy. Jesus makes me happy. I don't have wealth, I don't have anything, but I have Christ Jesus in me. He makes me happy, he strengthens me, he comforts me and he says every day I will take care of you, every day I will take care of you. With every peace and joy and comfort on this earth until rapture and heaven. So when I get reminded of that, I sing, I sing, I sing, and I sing, that's all I do. And I work, I do my work, singing, praising, praising Jesus who says, I will take care of you with peace, joy and comfort. Then this man looked at him and he said, come this side. And he said, see what I'm writing here. So he, he was shivering this boy, he came close to him. So this big man, this big boss, the owner of this, he was a billionaire, I believe. He put his arm around him and said, don't be afraid, You'll see what I'm writing. He was writing a letter to his own son, own son, pleading with the son, come back son, please come back, come back. And this boy asked him, and this big man, this big boss, this billionaire was weeping, weeping. And he just said, you pray for me that my son will come back. My dear children, and, this, and he knelt before that little boy, and that little boy hugged him, that cleaning boy, and asked the Lord Jesus. And sooner or later, the miracle happened. The son came back, and this billionaire called for this boy and made him a big, big manager in his own company, unspeakable gift. This boy didn't ask, but that big man well, felt he had to do this as a gratitude to God, to Jesus, by helping this boy, because his own son has come back. His own son had accepted him as the father, and the father accepted him as the son. There is acceptance today, oneness today, peace today in your home, in your family, in everywhere. Beloved, you don't have to be troubled. Oh, the roof is broken. The roof is that which separates you from the outside world. So there is a roof getting broken today in your life and my life. What is that? The roof of sin. Oh, beloved. Sin that separated us from God. Sin was like a roof over our lives, unknowingly. Sometimes we don't know. Maybe pride, maybe unbelief, maybe all kinds of doubts. Beloved, maybe some unholy behavior. Sometimes we don't know, we don't care. 
Oh, beloved, untruthful behavior, unrighteous behavior. But there is no condemnation. Remember, no condemnation. Sometimes we live without even acknowledging Jesus as our Savior and Lord. Callous behavior, ignorant behavior, whatever, it's all a sin. But today, what separated God and us is broken, broken. Jesus is risen. His blood has been shed to forgive us. He is risen. So you can come to Jesus. You don't have to go through any man. You, can, you don't have to go through any saint. It's vain. It's vain. I don't know. I leave it to you. I, I preach the Bible. That's all. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Hebrews 4, verse 15, 16. Hebrews 4, verse 15, 16. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So simple the Bible is, so true the Bible is, so living life the Bible is. You can come to Jesus no matter who you are. You may have messed up everything, feeling insecure, unsafe, unaccepted in life. Come, there is one man who will accept you, he is Jesus. There is one man who will shelter you and you are safe forever until rapture and eternal. You and your household, all of us, he is Jesus. He won't ask questions. He won't put you into a test. No, he will put you into his love, into his compassion, into his mercy, into his grace, into his blood. He is risen from the dead. Come. The roof is broken. Whatever the dirty, defeated devil put between you and God, even from the childhood, even from a childhood. Even I was watching one preacher. God bless him anyway. On the streets, God bless him. Shouting at people. Virtually condemning everyone. Of course, he was preaching the gospel. He was telling the truth. He was telling the truth. God bless him, but no grace, no love, no compassion. Where is Jesus? And there was a man walking on the road. He was supposed to be in some kind of sin. Yes, it is. God condemns sin, but compassionates the sinner and saves the sinner. That's why I'm seated here to preach the gospel. A saved sinner. Oh, a saved sinner. Now a son. By his great compassion and his mighty power. Mighty power. He's the same for all of us. So that man came crying to the preacher and said, Sir, 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 I was born this way. I was born with this nature in me. I was born with this addicted nature in my flesh. I'm enjoying it. This is the way I live. This man was weeping, crying. I was born this way. You think God is going to condemn that man? Never. Not the God of the Bible, not the God that Abraham knew or Moses knew or, or, or David knew or Daniel knew or, De, or Paul knew or Peter knew or I know or any of you dear ones know. The blood was shed for sinners. Preach the love. Preach the compassion. Preach his mercy. Preach his holiness. Preach his grace. Even today, anyone can come to the blood. Oh, my loving, just tell them Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Just tell Jesus you come, Lord, into my life. That's all. Don't preach anything more. Jesus will come into every life that calls him, invites him. And when Jesus comes, every darkness will go away. When the light comes, darkness goes away. I don't come into a dark room and say, darkness, go away, go away, go away. I am now going to put the light. I am going to dress myself. I don't say that. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. I just come and put the light. Put the switch. The power comes. The light comes. More than all this power is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. When Jesus comes into our life, all darkness will go away. First Corinthians 13th chapter, verse 10. Every darkness, fear, sin, death, curse, all will go away. Just invite Jesus over and over again. He will come and fill you and fill you and live in you through his Holy Spirit. 
all of us, all of us. The roof is broken. Jesus saw their faith. And what is their faith now? I always preach this now. They didn't say, oh, he's in a meeting. We will wait outside. So when he comes, he'll put his hand on us and go. No. His word is life. This man must hear his word. Everyone born on this earth must hear the word of God. That Jesus Christ is our salvation. He is our hope for future on this earth and eternal in heaven. He is our life on this earth until rapture and eternal. He is our forgiveness and pardon on this earth until rapture and eternal in heaven with Jesus. There is no other way. He shed his blood on the cross to die for sinners like me and all. He loves you. He rose from the dead, defeated Satan and sin and death and curse and all works of hell. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. He loves you. He rejoice. He loves you. There is no condemnation. Come rejoicing. He loves you. He loves you. You will be saved as his child redeemed forever. And be his bride, be his true bride at his coming as a bridegroom to rapture us soon. What a joy, what a joy, beloved. Come, all your tears will be wiped away. All your mourning will be turned into dancing. He loves you. He loves you. Jesus looked at their faith. They said he must hear his word. That's why they put him right in front of Jesus. Jesus looked at him and how did he call him? He didn't call him in any other name but son, son, son. When you seek his word, when you love his word, when you read his word. My loving children, my loving children, read his word over and over again and be saturated with his word. And say, Lord, I will do your word, not hearers only. I will do your word, James 1, 22. I will obey your word, beloved ones. What a joy, what a joy. Jesus said, son, he calls you son, daughter, no matter who you are. He takes the role of a father. You become his child. And then what did he say? Your sins are forgiven. The roof is broken. Nothing can separate you and me now. Nothing can separate you and God anymore because the blood of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus has destroyed everything the defeated devil put between you and God. Every sin, curse, death is broken. Rejoice, rejoice. Oh, beloved ones, he loves you, loves you, loves you. That's the work of his love, his mercy, his grace, by his blood and his resurrection, forgiving us, saving us, making us his children. We belong to him now. Holy Spirit lives in us. Jesus gave a gift at the blood. There is a gift at the blood of Jesus. There is a gift for us. Holy Spirit, he comes, lives in us. He is God in spirit, filling our spirit, our soul, even our body, healing us, healing us, what not, beloved. And says you belong to Jesus now. What a joy, what a joy. No more sin, no more curse, no more death. You are overcoming all that with love and life and righteousness of Jesus. Rejoice. He loves you freely, freely he gives it to you. Son, no more sins. Your sins are forgiven. Nothing can separate you and me now. We are one. We are one, Jesus says to all of us. Money doesn't make you one with Jesus. Money doesn't give you safety and security. You don't think, oh, I have money, I am insured. Oh, beloved ones, you can be insured with all the insurance companies on the world. But if you are not insured with Jesus Christ through his blood and his resurrection, that your sins are forgiven and you are saved, saved and saved, there is no more assurance. No assurance for your life or your peace or your joy on this earth and in heaven. It's Christ Jesus. Come, he loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. Leave aside this depending on money and people. Leave aside them all. Your safety is Jesus. Your shelter is Jesus. Your assurance is Jesus. 
Oh, beloved, your life is Jesus. Your victory is Jesus. Your peace and joy is Jesus. All of us on this earth until rapture and eternal with our child's children, our generation, your generation, or in whatever way you are. Rejoice. Oh, he loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. And then, you know what Jesus said? Take up your bed, rise, take up your bed, and go home to your house. Now, when he said your sins are forgiven, these learned people, these intellectuals, and all these scribes, Pharisees, oh, they started arguing and finding fault with Jesus. Whenever there is love shown, there will be always opposition. Money, silver, gold, they all will run. When you preach the love with purity, purity and the power of the Holy Spirit, there is always my loving children. It's time. Jesus is coming soon in midair to rapture us. He's coming as the bridegroom. We must be as the true, true, true bride on this earth. Every moment, all of us, until rapture and eternal. He loves you with our child's family, our generation, your children's family and generation, or in whatever way you are. Don't settle yourself. I have a good job. I have everything. What are you doing with your money? What are you doing with what God gave you? These are questions to ask these days. Is there anything separating you from Jesus' money? That you are now very happy, good job, good money, good position. Jesus has blessed you with all that. What have you done for Jesus? Have you blessed his church? Have you been grateful to his church? That lifted you and saved you, protected you. Oh, beloved ones, remember the past. Remember the past. Remember how you came one day and how you left one day. Hallelujah. My loving children, 38 years has gone in, in the mighty ministry of Jesus, in his mighty greater works, in his mighty compassion. Still more to go until rapture. I think of many, many, many. I know how they came and how they left, oh God. But only one out of 10 turned back and blessed the church. We don't, we, we don't live by your blessing anyway. It's all him. But it's counted for your righteousness. For your righteousness. Let nothing separate you from Jesus. You may have everything here. But if you can't get to heaven, what's the point? Miserable, miserable. I just pray that none of us will be in that place. That his blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. 1 John, 1st chapter, verse 7, 8 and 9. Nothing separates us. Money, silver, gold, our job, our whatever, comfort. No. Think back. What have I not done for Jesus yet? Think back. What have I not done for Jesus? Have I not served him? Have I preached his word? Have I praised him? Have I praised him? Have I thanked him? Have I been grateful to him and his house? Have I been holy, holy and truthful in everything? In my finance and my family and with everything? Have I been humble? Have I been humble, honest? We must all, all ask this. Am I working hard, working hard in my office, honestly, with every holiness? Let us ask myself, you all, all of us. Let nothing separate us from God and his love. Let every defeated sin be broken today. He loves us, loves us, loves us. Come, he loves you. He told that man, rise, take up your bed and go home. Though many were opposing and shouting and murmuring and grumbling, Jesus paid no attention to them too much. He answered them, but he was more concerned about this man today. And he went home. As a testimony, he's going home as a new man with a new love, with a new compassion, with a new hope, with a new joy, with a new peace, with a new victory, oh, with a new heart, with a new soul, with a new body. 
His home is blessed because he's carrying the grace of Jesus. He's carrying the peace of Jesus. Today, your home is blessed. Lift your hands and receive. Your home is blessed. Your family, your child, your children are blessed. Everywhere there is a blessing, there is a healing. Rise, take up your bed and go home. He said, be a blessing to your family. Be a light to your family. Oh, begin, begin, begin from your home. He loves you, loves you, loves you. Oh, it's all going to begin good and great from today. The past is over. Your past failure, sorrow, sin, death is over. He gives you a new heart and a new spirit. Lift your hands and receive. Holy Spirit says, I give you my son, my daughter, a new heart and a new spirit. This is what David asked. Lord, create in me a new heart and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Psalm 51.10, let us tell him, he loves you, loves you, loves you. Your old life is over, your old pain is over, your old, weak, your old sin is over, your old weakness is over, your old sickness, disease is over, your old death is destroyed over, your old talking of curse and fear is over. My loving children, my great children, Think of those things that are of good report. Don't read books that frighten you and scare you about all kinds of defeated evil. Read the Bible and read the books of life, life and life in abundance, victorious, holy, peace, joy on this earth until rapture and eternal. We are the bride. He's coming to rapture us. Come on. Church, all of us, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. The old sorrow is over. The old tension is over. The old stress is over. He comes to take over everything. He comes to live in you and care for you and bless you and protect you and shield you and shelter you and keep you safe and assurance of victory on this earth. Life in abundance, John 10, 10, Psalm 91, 16, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, until rapture and eternal. He loves you. You're no more lonely. You're no more stressed. Lord, I'm stressed out. No, he's your father. He's your father. He holds you. Come on. Come to Jesus. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him today. Tell him. Don't be tired. He's renewing your strength. All of us, mentally, physically, spiritually, you're going to rise. All of us like an eagle. Hallelujah. He loves you, loves you, loves you. Come on. I'm going to give you two minutes now just to invite Jesus. That's all. Just to invite Jesus. Oh, don't say God knows everything. Why didn't he do it? Why didn't he do it? Now, that's the common question. No, beloved ones, I beg of you, beg of you. I'm nothing, but I beg of you. Invite Jesus. Invite him. Those who came to him, those who called on him, those who sought him, received everything. Those who came to him, those who called on him, those who sought him, received everything. Those who came to him, those who called on him, those who sought him, received everything. You can easily call Jesus. You have a heart, you have a spirit, you have a heartbeat, you have a breath, you call on Jesus. Call on him, seek him, seek him, seek him. He is your shelter, your safety, your assurance, all of us. He loves you, loves you, loves you. You will rejoice. We are going to rejoice from today on this earth, on this earth with peace, comfort, until rapture and eternal. Oh, it's going to be great because he is our living God. I'm going to give you two minutes, two minutes. Just invite Jesus. Tell him, Lord, I need you. I need you, Jesus. I need you over and over again in my life. Fill me. Two minutes I'm giving you. Oh, huh?
He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Now I'm going to pray for you. You invited Jesus. He's there already filling you, filling you. You are not never alone again. Never alone. Never, never. All that defeated loneliness, all is gone. You won't know it. All those defeated bad dreams are gone. You won't know it. It's gone. I'm going to ask Jesus now to stretch his hand always. His hand is always. He loves you, loves you and bless you and give you your needed peace, joy and your miracle and your healing. We will pray. Loving Father, loving Father, Abba Father. Yehovah Ire, Yehovah Nisi, Yehovah Elche. Yehovah Rofa, Yehovah Palat, Yehovah Shalom, Yehovah Shama, Yehovah Sedeknu, Yehovah Uzi, Yehovah Ezra. Yehovah Elohim, Yehovah El Roy, Yehovah Rohi, Yehovah Elohim, Yehovah El Elyon, Yehovah Ava, Yehovah Goel, Goel, Yehovah Adonai, Yehovah Ba Father, Yehovah Yeshua, I humbly thank you, you are there. Now, 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 your hand upon every one of your loving children as you see their faith now. Lord, their faith is in you, their faith is in you, our faith is in you, Savior, you, risen Savior, resurrected Lord, your blood cleansing me, cleansing me, cleansing us, washing us, hallelujah. And the great Holy Spirit bringing us all into the word, under the word, under the word of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let your peace descend. Let your joy descend and fill them. Your peace, your joy. Lord, your rejoicing spirit, your joy, your peace, your comfort, comfort in their soul, their spirit, an assurance, a safety, a shelter that they will live, 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 all of us until rapture and eternal. Hallelujah. You are the God of life, Yehovah El Che. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, you are blessing them, you are blessing them, you are healing them, you are delivering them, you are holding them, you are sheltering them. They are safe now, their homes, their families, all of them, every tear is wiped away, every tear is wiped away, every tear is wiped away. Thank you, Jesus, thank you. You are comforting them because you live, we shall live also. Thank you, Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, your hand upon every one of them. Thank you, Jesus. You are healing them. You are healing them. Every dirty, defeated thyroid glands and all issues related to that, Jesus heals, heals, heals. Jesus heals. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Janet. Jesus heals. Thank you, Jesus. Removes every fear and uncertainty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your blood, your blood, your blood is healing. Your blood is delivering. Your word is comforting. Your word is healing. Your word is washing. Your word is saving. Holy Spirit filling them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Every defeated heart ailments. Thank you, Jesus. You are healing. You are the healer. Healed, healed by Jesus' stripes. Thank you, Jesus. Victoria, receive your healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus is healing. Every defeated ailment in the brains, uh, blood blocks and brain disorders. Jesus heals and delivers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus heals every defeated ailment in the ear in the years, deafness, Jesus delivers, loosens you. Thou shall hear now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Stuart, Stuart, Jesus is healing you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Rodney, Jesus is loosening you. Receive, receive, receive. Carmel, Jesus is now opening that door and loosening you now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Every defeated ailment in the legs, in the legs. Jesus heals. Jesus delivers, loosens. Let the lame rise and walk. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Go home. Be a testimony and a joy to your family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Every defeated ailment in the shoulders, in the hands, unmovable, unmovable hands. Jesus is healing. Holy Spirit power, Holy Spirit power is flowing into every bone, cell and bone.
body. Jesus heals, heals, heals. Holy Spirit heals, heals, heals and delivers. Move your hands, move your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Everywhere, defeated ailment in the spine, in the spine, everywhere. Holy Spirit is loosening you, loosening you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Monica, thank you. Holy Spirit is loosening you. Thank you. Every defeated ailment in the wombs, Jesus is healing. Every defeated ailment in the skin, Jesus is healing. Every defeated skin disease, skin rash, eczema, psoriasis, Jesus is delivering you. Jesus is delivering you. Every defeated tension and fear and fear of the unknown future, fear of all these dreadful things. Holy Spirit is comforting you, strengthening you, giving you the the hope and the faith and the joy and the joy because Jesus lives you shall live also thank you Lord thank you Lord your faith your faith your faith your faith into your children that they will read none other but your holy living word of faith and life thank you Jesus thank you thank you Lord you are healing the intestines you are healing the intestines you are healing the intestines every lumps every every lumps every tumors Jesus is today destroying holy fire Holy Spirit fire is burning them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Every mental agony, every unbearable sorrow and every unbearable restlessness. Holy Spirit is comforting you, giving you faith, 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 hope. It's going to be well. It's going to be good. It's going to be better. Jesus is doing it. He's coming and filling you over and over again. Open your heart and receive Jesus. Jesus over and over again hallelujah every unbelief every doubt is washed away by the blood of Jesus by the resurrection power of Jesus thank you every doubt is washed away thank you Jesus thank you everywhere 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 Jesus is healing Jesus is healing lift your hands and receive this is our wonderful miracle moments miracle moments lift your hands and receive lift your hearts and receive lift your voices and receive 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 singing praises praises, praises to him. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Hillary, Hillary, receive, receive, receive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Every defeated fear is going away. Every defeated unbearable fear is going away. Every defeated bad dreams are being driven out. Holy Spirit is cleaning you, cleaning you. Holy Spirit is coming to dwell and live in you. No more death, no more curse. Receive, receive, receive. Everywhere he's, he's blessing your hands. The labor of your hands, the labor of your hands. Holy Spirit is leading you into good jobs. Be, be, oh, today grateful, grateful, grateful to him and praising him. Gratitude of glory, glory, glory to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Holy Spirit, every defeated throat pains. Holy Spirit is defeating it, healing you. Every defeated lung disorders, breathing disorders. Holy Spirit, is delivering you. He is raising your immune systems, immune systems. Thank you, Lord. The blood flow is normal. The urine flow will be normal. He is healing your kidneys, your liver. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Receive, receive and tell the Lord, fill me, Lord. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your grace. Fill me with your forgiveness. Fill me with your cleansing, cleansing power. Cleanse me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Heal me, heal me. Tell him, tell him, tell him, heal me, O Lord. Lord, I will be healed. Save me, O oh Lord. I will be saved. You are my praise. Tell him, tell him. Lift your hearts and tell him. Receive your miracle. He is immersing you in his love, compassion, in his life, life, life. Every sin is forgiven, washed by his blood. Hallelujah. You are rising up as a new person, new person. Oh, hallelujah. Everywhere there is healing and life in abundance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus is healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Holy Spirit is healing. Abba, Father is healing and delivering and saving, saving, saving. The saving grace, the saving love, the saving power of Jesus is flowing into your spirit, soul and body. Receive in your home, your family, your child, your generation, all of us until rapture and eternal. Thank you. Every defeated pains and aches and pains in your body, Jesus is destroyed. Drawing it. Thank you, Jesus. Every defeated ailment in your child, Jesus is healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everywhere. Receive, 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 receive. Rejoice.
rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. He loves you, loves you, loves you. Rejoice, making you his child, his child. You are his child, receive. You are his bride, receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He is healing your eyes, your eyes. Jesus is delivering you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. The lame will walk. The dead will rise. Thank you. The blind will see. The dumb will speak. Luke 7, 22. Matthew 11, 5 and 6. John 14, verse 12. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. Rift your hands. Holy Spirit is giving faith and faith to you. Hope to you. Removing every doubt that you don't look here, there for answers. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in the love of Jesus. Love of Jesus. Love of Jesus. Receive. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Everywhere, everywhere, there is healing and life, life in abundance. Saved, 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 sheltered life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen, 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 amen. He loves you. 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 You have received your miracle. Why should you be sad? You will never see that old defeated enemy of your soul again. Check your body. Rise and walk. Move your hands, move your legs. Check your eyes, your ears. What you couldn't do before, do now. Take something and read, read. Try to hear something. Remove any medical gadgets or bandages or wheelchairs or crutches. Run, walk, do something. Your faith, your faith, your faith. Jesus saw their faith. What, where is your faith now? He has given you faith. Express your faith. Do something by faith. You will know you are healed. You will know you have the peace and the joy and no more fear. No more fear. No more thoughts to sin. No more wanting to sin. Gone. Such a joy. Such a joy. No more tension. No more stress. Because he cares for you. He has come to live in you. He will take care of everything for you. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Do not fear. He loves you, loves you, loves you. Send us your praise reports and your prayer requests. Your prayer requests. Send us. We pray for you. We will ask the Father for you in Jesus' name. And your testimonies, praise reports, we will rejoice and give God the glory, the glory, the glory and the praise and the honor. When we do that, our faith will rise. Our faith will rise. Faith gives victory. Faith gives victory. Rejoice, rejoice. The old painful sin life is over. It's victory. It's victory in everywhere. He loves you, loves you, loves you. You are his child now. You belong to him now. You are his bride, all of us. I'm going to say the benediction, the blessing. The blessing comes from the Lord Almighty, Jesus of Nazareth. Me and my dear precious wife, Swanti, and our one and only dear precious daughter, Divina. We are going to ask Jesus to bless us all, all of you, every one of you. He loves you, Jesus. May the love of the Lord Jesus and our Heavenly Father and the great grace of our Lord Jesus risen and the great love, compassion and the, and the life of God in the power of God, the Holy Spirit, be with us all, within us all, around us all, upon us all, ahead of us all, in the rear of us all, now and forever. And when Jesus, our bridegroom, comes in midday as we practically, physically live on this earth in these long more years, serving him fearfully, fervently, faithfully, fruitfully and fully, caught up in midday as his bride, as his true, true, true bride, with all his beloved ones all over the world, all of us, as the wheat in the Father's barn. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15, 17, 18, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, Philippians 1, 6. Thereafter, Jesus takes us into heaven, into our Father's mansions, to live, rejoice, reign with him. John 14, 2, 3, Luke 10, 20, Philippians 3, 20, Jude 24, 25, forever and ever, eternally, with rewards, crowns, marriage, suffer the Lamb, our families, our grandchildren, our generations, all of us, forever and ever, eternally, with Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. What a joy, what a joy, I'm rejoicing. I'm nothing but rejoicing. He loves you, loves you. See you again, see you again, see you again, always until rapture and eternal. See you again.